In just a few weeks time, we get the keys to our brand new cottage here in Scotland. Well, it's actually not brand new, it's older than my granddad, but we've spent the last few weeks exploring our hometown and the surrounding areas, and it has been ace. Whiskey tour, baby! Oh, good luck a lot, Trev. Wow. We're now starting the drive back home to Wales to pack up our things, ready to start the move to Scotland in the new year. How exciting. New year, new house. As we head down from the Highlands, we're going to enjoy the last few days in Custard the Bus, visiting friends before spending Christmas with our friends and family. Just call us Chris Rhea. We're literally driving home for Christmas. It's time for some Christmas markets, lads. Are you ready, Trev? Mm. Hello, is that Edinburgh Christmas Markets? <laughs> yeah, we'll be there in about an hour. <laughs> first things first, a couple of van life chores. Empty the pee, empty the grey waste, and get rid of our rubbish. And the only reason I ever wake up this early is for shopping. This job never. Fun. That's why I never do it. We've got our rolls. Stick to them, Craig. Let me show you the current state of our trailer board. There's ratchet strapped on. So hopefully she gets us back to Wales. Oh, custard. She's pulling apart leather. Hopefully our prop shaft lasts all the way to Wales, because that does not sound good. What's a prop shaft? No idea, mate. Something that shafts a prop. Shafts a prop. Next stop, Edinburgh. You're gonna buy yourself some new trousers, Trevor? Yeah. And when I take him to the, the register, the till, I'm gonna go, one pair of new trousers, please, love. And she's gonna go, you're not from around here, are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm from the moon. We have been to Edinburgh many times. It's an incredible city with some epic activities on offer. For example, sleeping on a proper fancy boat. I'm not leaving, ever. Potion making. <laughs> Tasting some of the best food available in this world. You know, you can Trike rides. What a way to see the city. Ghost bus rides. And some of the most amazing whiskey experiences ever. Going in. Yo, <laughs> that one's very strong. Not to mention the Christmas markets, which aren't as magical as in the night time, but we went anyway. Welcome to Edinburgh, lads. First stop, Room and Rumours Coffee. If you come in, you do vegan donuts. Levels! Breakfast! So we've decided to go Christmas today. We've got a Biscoff Cine bun, which is just to die for. A chai latte, Christmas in a cup. And when you come to Room and Rumours, you have to get a donut because they're the best. So we just got a jam donut. Have to. Be rude not to. I don't really know what you're going to have, Craig, but... <laughs> Can't take you anywhere. I forgot I put my teeth in, in the serviette and then I you use the serviette. <laughs> just fish them out, Seth. Oh, man. It's a hot mould punch. Yeah. Mm. Wow. I think I inhaled that before I drank it. That's strong. That's what you'll get on the streets of Scotland. Put some ears on your chest, Trev. That's lovely though. Is that red wine, is it? Oh, it's a hot fruit punch, isn't it? Personally, I'm more famous than Ooh, that packs a punch. Pun intended. Absolutely loving Christmas this one, look at that. So good to be back in Edinburgh, what a city. Do you know it's my favourite in the world? Is it actually? Yes. I mean, it's up there for me. This is where I actually first started looking for rings for Amy when I decided to drop a knee. I didn't find one here, unfortunately, but yeah, this is a special city. We've been here so many times and yeah. so much to do, so many good restaurants, so many good little cafes and yeah. I know, I wish we had more time just to eat our way through. I know. You know? But if you are planning a trip to Scotland, we've actually got a Scotland map that we've made. All of our favourite places to eat and see and do in Scotland and the Cairngorms, Edinburgh. So if you want to get our map, we're actually going to do a Christmas sale. Yeah. So all of our maps are now 9.99 on the website. So head over there. We've got Scotland, we've got Japan, we've got Wales. We've got some more coming soon as well. Yeah, don't worry about planning your own itinerary, guys. We've done it for you. I, I always go out and find the best things to do in places. 
places and they've all been pinned on there so just pick it up and off you go Merry Christmas you know there is actually a company that does this like it comes it can put it all around you know, your porch you know the new porch I'm going to do a little extension porch so you give them a call and be like right I want it all the whole shebang Christmas at our house Craig is going to be amazing we're going to have like life-size reindeer lights all the way up the drive you know we'll get a Santa in we'll invite the village tell their children to come we'll give out gifts oh, Christmas next year is going to be wicked Oh, you go. Well, you know, every time you come to a Christmas market, you have to get traditional Christmas market food. So I got a standard um, Massaman curry. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. So uh, it's from the police, and it says a member of Police Scotland has tried to reach you. Please email the contacted address given over leaf. And then the bottom it says, "Love your YouTube channel, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy the sea. Good luck with your house purchase." <laughs> what a little bugger! How scary is that to find on your windscreen, though? I was like, I know I'm, who that is. I'm sure Craig's paid for the parking. Flying Scotsman on the YouTube. I don't know what your real name is, but thanks for thanks for the, the heart scare. attack. All right, so Edinburgh wasn't actually on the list of things to do coming down, but I thought, you know, while we're there, a little, little bit of shopping had to be done. Um, but now the real reason why we're coming sort of this way, we're going to see our friends Will and Jane. They're actually waiting for us now, so we better go. Meet Will, my oldest friend. We literally met when we were three years old. Will now lives with his fiancée Jane here in Scotland. Some of you might recognise him from our Mongol Rally documentary. One, two, three. <laughs> did we mention we did the Mongol Rally? We drove from the UK to Russia and spent over 60 days together sat in a little Fiat Panda. Will met Jane when we went on a trip to Bali and the whole time on the rally they were texting back and forth like little schoolgirls. Will ended up flying out to see Jane again and left us in Ulaanbaatar in Mongolia. Fast forward six years and he and Jane have just bought a lovely place in Scotland and they're expecting a little baby. We're having a little tour of Dunbar with Will and Jane. Lovely little place this is, never heard of it before. Uh, and they live on the high street and they're literally right next to the sea. Lovely views, proper little Scottish town. Look at this. Stunning. Blowing the cobwebs off for sure. It's just so rugged and raw and the colours are just insane around here. It's so lovely that we've both ended up in Scotland, you know? Really, really crazy, but it's just lovely to be at this part in our journey together. Yeah. And see where they've chosen to live and they'll come up and see where we are. And I mean, we're three hours away from them, but you know, they're still our neighbors. You know, we've traveled so much in the world that a three hour drive really is nothing to us anymore. Yeah, I think just knowing that one of my oldest mates and one of my best mates has found Jane and she's, she's class. She keeps him in check. <laughs> This video is sponsored by Surfshark. George, a cup of Yorkshire's finest as quick as you like, darling. No, Margot, I'm not tight with my money. And yes, I know what Auntie Victoria said. She's a jealous, freckled goose cap. Tell her I said that. But I will be buying Christmas gifts for all of the grandchildren this year. I'll show them tight. Okay, out of the 14 million I inherited, how much do I have left? <gasps> how can this be? This isn't a time for tea, George. Give me a stiff one, I've been robbed! It looks like someone's stolen your identity and hacked your bank account here, S. Delphine. <laughs> Don't you use Surfshark? What's that? It's a virtual private network, Mom. Oh, do talk English, George! It's basically an app that secures your private information by encrypting all of your data, making it useless and untouchable for hackers. Surfing the web, you're exposed to many risks, data breaches, hacking attacks, snoopers. Protecting your connection is key, Madam D. One solution to fight them all? Surfshark VPN. Let me get it for you for Christmas, Mom. It's only cheap. It also comes with webcam protection, darling. Mum, mum. It blocks access to your camera from all unauthorised apps, meaning no one can snoop on you. It seems the hackers may have used your webcam to steal your identity. Oh my gosh, that is not me! <laughs> Let's try again next year, Delphine. Get an exclusive Surfshark holiday deal. Enter promo code RYOW to get up to six additional months for free. Head to the link in the description. So Will's brought us to like a sort of secondhand furniture shop, which is my everything right now. This is what we found. 
34 pounds. This is cottage vintage at its finest, which is what we kind of want to do the cottage in. Amy's like, let's put it in the bus and take it home and then bring it back to the cottage. I'm like, no, where are we going to sleep? So we'll sleep in our bed, we'll put it in the aisle. And then when we need to use the aisle, we'll put it in the bed. So cool. She's on one, lads. Look out. Draw and full length mirror, 28 pounds. These, I know they're very nan, but that's a bit of me. Let me take you to see the, the sofas down the front. Yeah, this one. You know, country cottage, slightly nan vibes. I'll take the mirror as well. But there's one thing we are definitely going to get from this shop. So uh, this is where we slept last night and uh, we're not sure if we're going to be able to get out. Yeah, it might be like a 25 point turn. Ah, professional. It's bloody freezing. So not every park up is glamorous. So we found a little truck stop <laughs> halfway down and I went in the motel and I was like, where do I pay for camper vans for the night? And she went, Tell you what, love, put your edge in there, it's free. I'm a camper. Aww. She goes, I'm a camper myself. That's nice. So, shout out to the lady from the motel in the limb services. One love. My guy. Yeah. And you're my guy also, Craig. Congratulations for putting in such a big shift. That was a hell of a shift. Hell of a drive. I don't think we can get much sleep, to be honest, but we got somewhere to sleep, so that's good. Earth's nightmare strikes again. Captain Bannister. It was a mistake, Frank. I didn't mean to. Get a Christmas tree. I'll get the one covered in polystyrene. And every time you touch it, it goes on the floor. Brilliant. Ready though, ready? Oh. Anyway, seeing as though I drove so much and yeah, put in a shift. Um, you understand that I can't Hang on, I haven't drive. finished my sentence. I'm going to make you some dinner because you deserve That's it. That's not... <laughs> that is not what you were going to I was going to. So, so being sat there for so long doing emails and editing and sorting our lives out and stuff. So I think you should actually make dinner. We've actually got loads of beans and bread. Do you want beans on toast? I think I want a uh, chicken curry. It's a McDonald's over there. I can see the golden arches. <laughs> I'm like, shall we just though? <laughs> Look at that kid. Look at that happy Christmas kid. <laughs> Honestly though, how good are those lights in this bus? These aren't getting taken down ever, Craig. I think we should just keep them permanent. I'm glad you said that. Or if you want a different vibe. Oh, look at that. Santa is for Indians. I'm marrying a toddler, ladies and gents. <laughs> 5 99 can't go wrong. <laughs> uh, there's quite a lot of food in this fridge. Is it? You'll be happy to know. Get in. Um, what are they? We're obviously. We're, what? What's that? What do you want? What's that? Which one? In the Cheese. No, no, next one. <laughs> no tea. What is it? These are goo plants, Spanish lemon cheesecakes. <whistles> Probably the best thing you'll ever put in your mouth. Buttery biscuit base. Dessert. Um, but for now, I think if we make a chicken curry, yeah? Sounds good. This is really good chicken. Chicken. So get to know that. Get some iron in. Um, obviously, a bit of Asia. Some pak choy is my face. Not when I don't cut them too short though, when they like get stuck between like your lung and your throat and you're like <laughs> fragrant leeks are no longer uh, the flower of our nation. We're a thistle now, we're not a leek. I'm still Welsh, I just live in Scotland. I'm only joking. Stop trying to change my nationality. You want a quiche Lorraine or are you gonna wait till tomorrow? It, it won't take me long to make dinner. Alright, I can wait then. Right. We have got a full haggis. Get that on the blower. We're gonna have a haggis curry. Is that a thing? Do have people do that? We'll have haggis on the side. No, we'll have that for tomorrow, lunch or something. Uh, has anyone tried this? It's called panther milk. It's an, an oat milk cocktail. It sounds minging. But it's kind of like a Christmas drink. Do you know what I mean? It's like a milky, like a almost like a Bailey's, yeah. Is it alcoholic? It's alcoholic, but it's only 15%. It's just a lovely little Christmas drink and you can have it half the cold. Nice. All right, Chef Gordo, what you got this side? Are we going to do rice? Yeah. What's that? 
Ah, oh, it's just one of my go-tos. Little Lafroy 10 year old. Who's into peated whiskey, anyone? Anyway? What about this cabbage that's been there for two weeks? Yeah, we'll use that. Pop that in the bin. We'll use You're that. You're joking, look at it, it's brown, mate. We take the bottom off and the middle be fine. You're a feral child. Any mice in there? No, I think they've moved out. We didn't actually catch any mice. Have a look, you never know. Could be. <laughs> oh, flip it! <laughs> <laughs> you little funny. I should have known. If you could hurry this up, it would be really great because I'm starving. Rice cooker, take it. Rice. What's that? One of those? Yeah. One of them. A couple of these. Ah, to speed things up, Holmes. I'll be great. One of them as well. I'll be great. One of them. Mango for over the top. And the main ingredient is one of these. Thai red curry we're having tonight. Oh no. We got no water. It doesn't sound good. Yes. Oh, careful now. Why is he doing that? It's Christmas. What does that mean? Tell you what, if you live in a van and you've got an inverter, you have to get a rice cooker. It's the best thing ever. You just chuck it on, it saves um, a cooking ring, and you get perfectly cooked rice every time. Bloody brilliant. Don't worry about like the roof leaking. The water pipes freezing, you know, the air con blowing off. If you have a rice cooker, you will be happy. Yeah, the air con blows off. Let's have a bowl of rice. Another beauty thing about having a bus is that you would never tell we're just parked in like a truck stop. So cozy in here. It's like your own little portable apartment. Although we're getting a house, I don't think I'll ever get bored of van life because custard is top level cozy. Look at that fluffy rice. What a dream. Is that enough for you? Don't be shy, love. Eat the rainbow, that's what they say, isn't it? This is the only way we get our five a day in. <laughs> Vegetable curry with chicken. I got a question for you all. When you just cooked a massive meal and you're starving, or just in day-to-day -day life, do you eat curries or like rice dishes with a fork or a spoon? I've transitioned to a spoon and it's a game changer. Probably because I just love shoveling my food in. But if you don't, give it a try. It'll change your eating world. And your digestive system. <coughs> I might blow your socks off actually. <laughs> it's not our usual uh, Thai red curry paste. You put the whole tub in, you're only supposed to put one teaspoon in. That's really, really spicy. Cheers. To massive bowls of curry. I'll be here. Good boy, Keith. You are, Dal. Here's your cuppa. Thanks, babes. Must be a good book. It's a very good book. I'm just <laughs> knackered. What's a book? Abroad in Japan by Chris Broad. He is a fellow YouTuber and a very good one at that. And he's been there for like over 10 years. And uh, it's just his stories on how he got there and how he got started. Like, he, he started teaching English in one of the like really rural schools up north. And he was just terrified and it just is going through so many stories of his life and stories of Japan and yeah, it just it takes me back. When we were in Japan, when I got engaged in Japan. <laughs> you say I, do you mean we? When we got engaged in Japan. I'm on the section of his book where he's talking about love hotels. Remember the love hotel we went to? I remember the many that we went to. I'll link it here. It's not for the faint hearted, but it is a really fun, funny video. You will see Craig coming down a, a water slide in our hotel room naked. Disclaimer. <laughs> You're gonna love it. What are you reading, Craig? Well, it's funny you should ask me because <laughs> I got my book right I by I don't here. actually care, so. <laughs> I am reading Rick Rubin's The Creative Act, A Way of Being. Now, I don't rave about books that much, to be honest, but if you're a creative person, and your mind's always going and thinking of things and ways of being creative. I'm, I'm this far into the book and this is the best book I've ever read on being creative. I'm highlighting like pretty much every page. It's just gold. So for anybody out there, if you're a YouTuber or a creative or a writer, whatever you are, musician, get this book, do yourself a favor. Can you read us the first thing that you've highlighted? Practicing a way of being that allows you to see the world through uncorrupted, innocent eyes can free you to act in concert with the universe's timetable. Absolutely genius. What's that mean then? You wouldn't know, love. 
why haven't you put your creative thoughts to, to good use then, to good <laughs> practice? It's a serious question. Cheeky <laughs> didn't you, love? Oh, God. <laughs> lads it's a fresh one here today at the services i've got no idea where we are i was just having a little quiet moment to myself this morning and i was thinking it's been a mad six weeks we've driven all the way up there in hopes of finding a house we found an absolute belter and this is going to be such a huge new chapter for us like i'm really excited for it i'm so ready to slow down like the last nine years has been unreal i think We've been sort of chasing travel for so long, but now this is what we're ready for. And um, I, couldn't, I couldn't be happier, to be honest. In other news, I've actually come off my antidepressants and I'm feeling really good. I was a bit worried to see you know, what would happen because it's been quite full on the last few weeks, like filming back-to-back -back videos, but I'm feeling good. So yeah, I'm excited for the future. Trev's just getting ready in there now, listening to Christmas music. and. Uh, I just can't believe. I don't know. I know a lot of you buy houses. A lot of people buy houses. It's such a normal thing to do. But I think because we spent ten years trying to avoid that, I think now that we're ready for it, it's like so exciting just to have our own place where we can relax and go back to after we've you know been on a long trip or something. Have our families and friends up to just hang out and all of it. I just I just can't wait. So. Yeah, I thought I'd share that with you lot. We better get on the road, so let's go see if Trev's ready. Are you ready yet, Trev? Really? Aren't you a little sporty number? Yes. Got VIP to the F1, have you? How are you feeling today? Yeah, I feel really good. The sun's out. We've had the Christmas music blaring all morning. I just feel really nice, you know? We haven't seen our families in ages. We're going to get home and spend a lot of time with them now. and. It's just a feel-good vibe at the minute, innit? I always get this kind of feeling like this close to Christmas because I just love this season. So yeah, everything's good. Okay, babes, what are you most nervous about for this new house? Everything. Everything? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Well, as novices to the DIY industry, Craig, uh, I'm just a little bit nervous about the whole um, renovation, the whole thing. We're going to need a miracle, Craig. If there's anyone watching that wants to help, uh, or you know how to help, please get in touch. We need all the help we can get. There's going to be a lot of problems, and a lot of ups and downs, and maybe a lot of arguments. So we're going to stand in front of the house before we get there. We're going to hold each other's hands, look into each other's eyes, and promise to be as patient and kind to each other as we can. Well, yeah, I was going to say, like, the whole point of this house is to slow down. Yeah. So we should just do it as slowly as we need to. There's no point rushing. There's no point in us getting aggy about it. Yeah. We're not in any rush to get it completed, you know? No, yeah. What do you think you're going to be really good at? Interior design. Don't touch it. No, that's just where my sort of passion and hobbies lie. Whenever we're ready to put in like all the furnishings, getting the beds in, putting all the throws on. I'm quite looking forward to like nailing wallpapering. Did you say nailing wallpaper? Yeah, nailing the wallpaper in. Nailing it, doing it right, not using a nail. I was going to say, you need to use wallpaper paste, babe, not, not nails. No, bro, you got I know. You've got a long way to go, kid. <laughs> We're going to learn so much, Craig. Yeah. And I, you know, I feel like traveling for nine years, I've already learned so much about the world, myself, people. And I just think this is going to just take us as humans to the next level. I think I'm just excited to have some space. I think just being surrounded by the trees and I've already talked about making the tree out into like a little meditation spot. I can't wait for that. Yeah. And yeah, just being able to wake up on our own bit of land, grow some veg and like cook with the food that I grow. We've been watching like Gaz Oakley lately. Shout out to Gaz if you don't follow him already. He's got a great YouTube channel. He's an amazing chef from Wales grow some epic stuff and cook some amazing meals so i just can't wait to be like gaz basically okay so breakfast snacks consist of mini cheeses they taste a little bit like rubber balls but we have to work with what we can get regarding vegan cheese christmas pudding can i eat this cold wheat crunchies bro the dawn of all crisps apologies if they don't sell them in your country that should be illegal 
We made it to Wales. Wales! It feels weird, it feels like we're visiting now. We were saying the other day, like, we're not going home, we're going to our parents', to our house. parents house, yeah. Hi, bye! Yes, babes! I do feel like we've left something behind in Scotland. I feel like we've left something back there, which is obviously the house and stuff, so... Yeah, yeah I guess in a way it does feel like we're kind of just visiting for Christmas and then we'll go back home, home to our actual home house with our own address which we can get primed to because Craig checked it. So that is great news. We're going to have to like register for electric, put our names on the electric bill and... Who, who have we got electric with? I don't know, that's what we need to find <laughs> out. And just like that, we're back at the farm. Also, I'd like to introduce you to our new 4x4 that we bought just before we went up to Scotland. So we kind of manifested wanting a house in Scotland. So we bought the 4x4 in preparation for getting the house. So yeah, that should do us really well up in the Highlands. Oh no. Oh, look at her, what a girl. She's gonna take us places, that's how you are. All right, so we're home. Now we've got to unpack, get everything sort of put away, clean the whole bus ready to go back up when we get our keys in January. So she's gonna sit dormant for maybe a month. Hopefully mice free, but this is where she got her mice last time. So chances are a new family might move in, not pay rent, and then we'll have to kick them out when we come back. Well, hopefully they have a nice Christmas. Though. Yeah, I'll leave some cheese. Also, if anyone lives um, near Barry in South Wales and you're selling a trailer, let us know. 95% of this stuff is Amy's clothes. You know when your mum used to come home with a shopping, you'd try and carry like 20 bags and you'd be like... That's what I'm trying to do. But this time I'm not shaking. Most wonderful time of the year. Most normal van lifers are like minimalist. Do you know what I mean? Like one bag of clothes. You need a pickup truck for Amy's clothes. Mental. I've been thinking about what winter shoes to get this winter. Some welly crocs. Crush boots, I think they're called. Best. Good boy, Keith. Alright, custard. See you in a few weeks. <laughs>